Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. Let's bleed the brakes on this Lexus IS300. I did uh, front and rear brake jobs on it. You can look at my other videos to see those uh, if you like. And now I'm going to bleed the brakes. It's been quite a while since this fluid has been changed. And there is a specification in your owner's manual. Uh, so, I would suggest you get it up up in the air and so you can get to all the bleed screws on each corner and I show you how to do that in some other videos look it up there's a little screen at the top opening of your master cylinder just lift it up a little bit like an eighth of an inch and twist it and it'll come right out I haven't done a brake bleed in a while. I'm going to try and use this system that I got, I used to use. It's called Motiv. When it's working, it's great, but sometimes it doesn't work uh, because of the seal on the master cylinder. They give you a universal seal, and then you have a bunch of adapters like, I don't know what that one is. This one's BMW. I've got a GM adapter, but uh, this is a Lexus Toyota, so I'm going to have to use this universal. Um, this tubing that comes with it, I just broke this apart with my hands, does not last forever. So make sure it's fresh tubing. If it breaks while it has fluid in there, you're going to have brake fluid all over the place. I just want to show you how this thing is falling apart. <laughs> um, not blaming the product really, but I mean it is this hose which is TPUCO. Don't know how to pronounce that. Polyurethane hose. Don't trust it more than three or four or five years, maybe. So what I'm doing off camera is breaking off all these old pieces of uh, worn out hose. And I, apparently at some point I bought some replacement hose. So I'm going to use that even though that's a few years old. I think it might work. I'm literally taking my thumbnail and peeling this off. It's that rotten. So what I'm going to do just to get this job done is I've got two of these clamps that have screws on them. They're kind of, well, just regular clamps. And then I've got a bunch that require a special plier to put them on. I don't have that plier. So I've got two and I can attach that one there and one on the other end. And then I'll be able to get this job done. And then I'll order up some more of this hose and I'll order up some more of these clamps and then I can make little individual ones like that. Anyway, this is like really off track from the brake bleeding job, but I'd throw it in there anyway. Suck as much old brake fluid out of the master cylinder as you can. It has these chambers inside of it, so it's kind of hard to get it all out um, because see just because they're chambers and they all come together at the top it has to do with safety front braking back braking diagonal braking it just it's a design it has to do with the safety of it and uh, it's beyond this video to explain that all to you but just suck as much as you can out use like a turkey baster thing then fill it up all the way to the top with fresh fluid because you want to be pushing fresh fluid through the system to get rid of the old fluid out of the bleeder valves at each corner. See how full I've got it? I've got it up past the fill mark or the past the high fill mark but that's okay because it's going to be dropping down. Use any kind of clamps you have to clamp it down to make a seal. It comes with some chains and some J-hooks and that's a really crappy design because it puts the pressure out on these two ears and you need the pressure in around the circle. Uh, but it looks like 
I got lucky. I'm sort of holding 10 PSI, and that's plenty. And I'm going to go for it. Uh, we're going to have to take this apart and refill with fluid every once in a while, just so you know. Do not put any fluid in the bucket. They tell you to put fluid in the bucket. I did it one time. The reason they tell you to put fluid in the bucket is so that you don't have to keep refilling the master, which is true. But if you put fluid in the bucket and this hose pops, which I did have it happen to me, yeah, it popped and there was brake fluid all over the place. If that happens to you, you will never, ever, ever put fluid in the bucket. Just use it for pressure. That's all. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a leak, but uh, it's going to be okay. I'm not leaking air into the system. The air is all on top here, on top of the master cylinder. It can't go through the fluid. So I'm losing about one PSI every two or three minutes, so that's not bad. Okay, I just cracked the bleeder. Get your wrench on first. I like to use the round closed end wrench. You could use an open end if you want to. It's 10 millimeter. And now you can see the um, fluid. Whoops. Sorry, the wind was blowing my paper away. Focus. There. Now you can see the fluid will start to collect in this bottle. I like these bottles. Um, it's got a tube or a hose that goes here. And then when you're done, you just pinch this and you stick it back on the bottle right there and you don't have very many drips maybe none at all so I'm gonna open this up a little bit more get some flow going and a little bit more okay now I've got some flow going on what I did was I took this whole bleeder off and I took a dental pick that's kind of straight and I shoved it in there. There's possible to be some corrosion or blockage or something down in there. And once I did that, I, you know, I had a little spill. I don't worry about that. Once I did that, I shoved this back on. You should probably wear gloves. I'm recommended that you do that. I don't because I've been doing it since I was about 14 years old and it hasn't killed me yet. But Wear gloves if you want to wear gloves. It's probably a good thing to wear gloves. I'm going to uh, let this get up to about the bottom of that label, maybe a little above the bottom of that label. And then I'm going to call this corner good. Keep checking your pressure. Make sure it's above 10 PSI. Don't go over 15. And uh, make sure that the fluid level in the master is okay. This corner will be the longest distance hose-wise and brake line-wise from the master cylinder. So this is the one you get the most fluid out of. When you get to the front, there's less brake fluid lines involved so that you won't be taking as much fluid. Um, and remember, we're pressing, we're pressing the new good fluid from the master cylinder all the way to this corner getting rid of the old brake fluid. Now it's going pretty good. Froggy's happy with that. See the fluid level is dropping in the master cylinder. I told you it would. It's still good. And our pressure is still good at about 12 and a half PSI. Good, good. So, and we're not getting any bubbles out of that right rear corner okay you see bubbles that's not a good thing that's air that means you're getting air into the system uh, you're doing something wrong if that happens and we've got plenty of brake, brake fluid over there okay the fluid coming out looks pretty nice and clean I'm gonna shut this corner off and uh, then move to the left rear just Twist the bleeder screw. Don't over tighten it. You know, I, I really can't tell you a torque spec on this, but it's a very small thread, small diameter, small, so don't over tighten it. That's all I can tell you. 
You're going to wipe up what you might have spilled and I'm going to spray a little brake cleaner fluid there and wipe it with a towel um, because you want to be able to see obviously later on if there was a drip on the floor of your garage for example if you were dripping brake fluid then you got a problem but so that's why you got to clean this up there's always likely to be in a little bit of a seepage or spill there I'm going to take the pressure off and then I'm going to top off that master cylinder what you do not repeat do not ever want to do is run that master cylinder dry because that means you are definitely putting air in the system and you're kind of screwed okay this one's flowing good I've got pressure good fluid in the master good and my level is coming up here good it's all flowing I think I'll let this one come up just above the red lettering there it actually looks oh sorry looks pretty good pretty clean um, I think I probably did do a break bleed on this uh, maybe within the past 12 to 20,000 miles maybe something like that uh, so they are all looking pretty good I didn't have a soft pedal or anything you see the little bubbles coming up there that's obviously because air is getting pushed out of the bottle by the fluid which is increasing its volume in the bottle so you can sell it you can tell there's fluid coming in okay we're good here I'm going to shut this off I think I've got enough in the uh, master to do the right front and we'll see how it goes from there I've got pressure in the bottle the thing that takes a little bit of time once you get everything going is refilling and resealing mainly resealing that getting it just right with all those clamps so let's do the right front the color looks good on the right front so I'm just gonna bleed it up to yeah, right about where my thumb is there and uh, then go to the final corner uh, see the bubbles bubbling good so there are good bubbles and bad bubbles bad bubbles are if you see them in this line here good bubbles is what comes out of the bottle okay so I'm on my last corner here and fluid level looks okay it could get down like another three quarters of an inch and it would still be okay so I'm not going to use up that much pressure is still at 10 psi maybe give that a couple pumps and uh, I'm going to use some super tape to seal up those bleed screws because the little rubber caps have gone lost somewhere on the freeways probably but uh, I've done another video on super tape it's uh, pretty good so look it up if you want to learn about it and so that's it unscrew this cap here there are other pressure bleeders and there are other suction bleeders so that's that's a whole other video comparing all those different kinds there see pressure came off Ooh. my pressure gauge is not going to zero is it all right well i'll have to put a new pressure gauge on there they wear out anyway take your clamps off set your level of brake fluid there would be a mark on there don't need this suction anymore we'll get that out of there and uh, I'll show you how to set the mark all right there's the max and the min there and uh, I would set it to the max because you've got new brakes all around and you've got new fluid all around so set it to the max it'll go down never top off brake fluid because then you're hiding a problem possibly and uh, why they put the min and the max markings on the inside 
of the engine compartment. I don't know, some dummy wasn't thinking. That Lexus. Makes no sense, does it? Should have been on this side here so you could easily see it. Oh well, they did some other stuff pretty good. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I'm not going to show you me pouring the fluid in. Put your little strainer back in there and uh, give me a thumbs up if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want more from Froggy. Be safe, have fun, and uh, I'll see you later. Froggy out. Bye-bye. One last thing to be clear. This does not change the fluid in the ABS, anti-lock braking system device, which is a very small amount of fluid, but there's a trick you can get that fluid moving or sort of change it. Um, if you can get your car to a safe place where you can lock up the ABS so that the front and rear and all the ABS is working, um, that pushes all this nice new fluid that you just put in the car and pushes it through that ABS module and that would uh, probably be a good thing to do. Um, but it's, it's a trick. I mean they have tools at a dealer where they will open and close and activate the ABS module but then you're into a few hundred bucks to do that.